For more than 125 years, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga has helped this region reach remarkable achievements. We have seen our community transition from a manufacturing dynamo to a renaissance city with a diverse economy of industry, high technology, services, and culture. Chattanooga boasts a world-class riverfront, the nation's fastest community-wide internet, and private-public cooperation that combine to attract some of the world's leading companies. And UTC has been a partner in that progress every step of the way. The tradition continues as the campus prepares leaders for the 21st century global marketplace. UT Chattanooga is proud to be a top choice for students from across Tennessee and the nation. In fact, in 2012, UTC was the only public campus in the state of Tennessee to grow in enrollment. And U.S. News and World Report named UTC a best value campus for 2013 and again ranked the campus among the top tier of Southern universities. As an engaged metropolitan university, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga forges strong partnerships to advance the educational, societal, and economic development goals of the region. Education at UTC goes beyond the traditional classroom and laboratory. UTC faculty members use their professional expertise to address the concerns facing the larger community, and Chattanooga and the surrounding region become a living laboratory for student learning and applied research. Nursing and physical therapy students improve the lives of patients in our region. Student teachers instruct alongside professional educators in our schools. Actors and musicians perform on stages across our community. Business students create plans to save struggling companies and expand thriving ones. And the results of these partnerships are simple to understand. UTC students gain the experience employers want. Lives are improved. Children learn. Communities are enriched, businesses thrive. While these partnerships exist across all of our disciplines and colleges, some of the most exciting and innovative projects occur in our College of Engineering and Computer Science. The college is growing in enrollment and graduates, and employers are taking notice of the focus on real-world problem-solving and research. According to Tennessee Higher Education Commission data, UTC engineering graduates enjoy the highest starting salaries of any engineering program in the state. The reason for that is all fine engineering schools have great graduates, but our students have actually worked, and that's a good thing. Um, I was a, a, an interviewer uh, at a company to actually go out and hire engineers, and the things I looked for were, were great grades, great programs, but also do they have work experience? Are they involved with their student societies? Do they know how to team? Do they know how to lead? Do they know how to follow? I try to make sure that all our students have those characteristics. The UTC Center for Energy, Transportation, and the Environment enjoys a long relationship with CARTA, the public transportation provider for the region. UTC researchers tested an inductive wireless charging station where buses parked on a charging plate that would raise to connect to the bottom of the bus. Although this offered an improvement over the previous system of changing batteries several times during the day, the systems would be costly to install. UTC researchers partnered with CARTA and local bus manufacturer EV America to test and introduce a new lithium iron phosphate battery. The new technology increases a bus's range from less than 50 miles to more than 100, eliminating the need for a midday battery swap. This saves time and money and allows CARTA to continue its 20-year-long service of free, emissions-free shuttles. You know, our niche is, is very different than some other universities. Some other universities are driven by curiosity-driven research. We're driven by the type of stuff that really solves a problem, that helps put people to work, and helps satisfy the needs of the community. One of the college's newest and most significant partnerships is with Volkswagen. Since opening its first North American plant in Chattanooga, Volkswagen made a $1 million commitment to UTC, making the campus one of its partners in education. The college is using Volkswagen's investment to support student designs and competitions and collaborations on transportation research. Volkswagen proudly supports the UTC Racing Mox and the Baja Car Project. In the 2012 International Competition, 
UTC placed 10th out of 100 teams, placing higher than teams from Michigan, Georgia Tech, and Alabama. The team scored a fourth place finish in the four hour long endurance race and a first place finish in the sales pitch presentation. Senior engineering student Emily Stark made the winning presentation for the racing mocks and captains this year's team. Executives from Honda and design engineers from Polaris and all, all sorts of industries related to the automotive field will come in and, and challenge you on why did you make this design decision? Why, why exactly did you go with this type of transmission versus this other type of transmission? And it really challenges you as an engineer to be able to back up your choices. It's exactly like what your boss would be doing or your boss's boss would be doing to you if you're trying to pitch a project at your workplace. Stark was also chosen for the Volkswagen Distinguished Scholars Program and spent the summer testing properties of newly developed carbon fiber at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. One of the college's most successful and lesser known partnerships is between UTC, the city of Chattanooga, and local road construction materials manufacturers. UTC student researchers worked with city public works officials and several local industries to develop a stronger, less expensive asphalt and tested the material on 5th Street, one of the campus's main thoroughfares. Since that project, the campus has become known internationally as an innovator in road materials research. Just this year, Dr. Mbaki Anyango, a civil engineering professor, received numerous grants from the Tennessee Department of Transportation. They have a problem, they want a solution, and so we're here to provide them with a the solution. And once they get that, they use it to advance the industry. UTC students research everything from lengthening the life of asphalt to improving surface reflectivity. In conjunction with the U.S. Department of Commerce, UTC hosted a group of civil engineers from Eastern Europe to demonstrate how university students and faculty members can work with local governments and the construction industry in addressing the infrastructure problems in a community. We're training students that are ready, industry ready. They get a lot of hands-on experience here at schools through these grants. So we get these grants, we involve students to work in the different projects. They get hands-on experience and that gives them added advantage when they go out to look for jobs. If it's high tech and happening in Chattanooga, the UTC College of Engineering and Computer Science is there. As Chattanooga evolves into the gig city, UTC is stepping up to become a gig university. Our Sim Center is employing the technology to develop a disaster mitigation network. Other faculty members are working with a consortium of power industry providers and distributors to develop workers prepared to manage the next generation of smart grid technology. Our high-tech training labs are so state-of-the-art that agencies such as TVA even hold training sessions in our facilities. I spent 21 years at the University of Oklahoma, I spent five years at the University of Alabama, and I chose to come to Chattanooga because Chattanooga is a happening place. There's something called the Chattanooga Way, and I like to think of it this way. The Fifth Street project that we did some time back where the city didn't have the money, the university didn't have the money, but the street needed to be paved. We found a way to get the materials donated, we did the engineering, the city did the paving. It's all about public-private partnerships. And it's easy to sit back and whine and say, ooh, Uncle Sam needs to send us more money, or the state needs to send us more money. And that's true, all of that's true. But we have to be very, very good stewards of the money. And I wake up every day proud of the efficiency of what we do, of how good a graduate, what a bargain we turn out for the taxpayer. Now that we've seen how UTC students explore real-world solutions through applied research projects, let's take a look at what the spirit of innovation and achievement can spur in our graduates. An outstanding example of how a UTC education can lead an alumnus to literally change the face of Chattanooga manufacturing is 1982 business graduate Don Leppard and his company, Global Green Lighting. For years, street lights have basically done one job in one way, illuminate the surrounding area by turning on and off. But when Leopard looked at a regular street light, he saw an opportunity to revolutionize the world of outdoor lighting and buck the national trend of outsourcing American jobs to overseas workers at the same time. Leopard credits both his UTC business education and his time on the gridiron as a football mock for the tenacity and drive needed to succeed in the business world. 
when you play football, you've got four downs to make 10 yards. And if you don't get it the first time, you go back to the huddle, you call another play, and you go back out there and you do it again. And you try to reach that 10 yards, and then you try to score a touchdown, and then you try to win the game. And so I always look at, at our business decisions as a game, uh, as a play that we're calling in the game. And if we run it and it doesn't work, we go back, we retool it, and we do it again. After graduating from UTC, Leopard provided electronics for the appliance industry. But when the 2008 economic downturn lowered demand for new appliances, Leopard was forced to lay off workers in his Chattanooga plant. He never forgot the anguish of telling his employees that they no longer had jobs, and Leopard pledged to somehow bring the jobs back. The recession almost put him out of business until he saw the light. I was actually reading the stimulus package at 2 o'clock in the morning and I saw $3.2 billion in energy conservation and retrofit. And I realized at that point that that was something that we could get involved with to basically retool our company and go after some of that stimulus funding. And we've been chasing it ever since. Leopard proposed replacing the standard sodium pressured bulbs and street lights with superior LED lights that not only reduce energy consumption while producing brighter, more natural looking lighting, but also reduce greenhouse gas emissions and light pollution. Global Green Lighting was born. Leopard recognized that customers would depend on the financial savings from energy use reduction to fund the new lighting systems. But skeptical city managers wanted more evidence, so he had to find a way to prove his energy reduction claims. We developed the LED lighting and we've got a great product and we've used our background to develop the thermal management for the lights, but it wasn't until uh, we were out promoting the product and we made the comment that we can save 50% energy reduction. And they said, how, how do you prove that? And it was, it was a really good question. And so the first thing that started traveling through our minds was, was how do we prove it? You're going to have to go back and get 12 months worth of energy bills and compare it to the next 12 months before you can actually prove it. So that's when we decided that we wanted to put a meter inside the light so that we can measure the uh, technology. The new system monitors light use and maintenance 24-7 and allows lighting levels to be raised or lowered based on specific needs such as crowd control. The fixtures can even flash to signal emergencies. Global Green Lighting signed a contract with the City of Chattanooga to replace the city's 26,500 streetlights. With an estimated annual savings of $2.7 million in maintenance and energy use, the system is projected to pay for itself in seven years. And with all the technical and product success Global Green Lighting is experiencing, Leopard is most proud of bringing jobs back to Chattanooga. And we would go over to trade shows and we would actually see our product in other trade show booths. And what we were finding out was is that we were losing our technology from the tool and die shops that we were paying to build our product. They were selling those designs to other companies. And so that's when I made the decision that no longer do I need to send these jobs to China. I want to bring them back to the United States. We decided that if we can do it in China, we can do it here in the States. Plans call for global green lighting to move 250 jobs to Chattanooga from China by the end of 2013. As additional contracts are signed, Leopard says more jobs could be created in Chattanooga and other cities. Leopard appreciates the role UTC has played in his success, and he is not only committed to creating jobs, but also in working with UTC to provide educational opportunities for students. We're going to be bringing students here to do co-oping, put them right on the production line so they can see it from an, a, an assembly standpoint. We're going to put them in the design center so that we can design product and see how all that comes about. Um, but the one thing that I hope that I can do with these students when they come here is, is to teach them that little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit where you, you don't have to do exactly what you were taught to do. Make it different. Leopard is continuing his high-tech business innovation by taking advantage of Chattanooga's gig network. Global Green Lighting's Urban Connection device will provide a separate power source and network connection for other devices. Cameras, air quality monitors, even next generation cell phone technology could be housed on the lights. If we can take the gig off of every pole that's already out there and put it into that light, we've created a host for all the other devices that you want to put out there. And so our goal now is, is to actually put a light up that's going to host other devices. And we can charge rent for those devices and actually pay for the cost of those lights without having to charge it to the taxpayers to buy the equipment and to maintain it. And we're going to let the private sector actually develop that for us.
While Don Leopard and Global Green Lighting are taking advantage of the high-speed fiber optic highway, another UTC alumnus has built a successful business over a more traditional system of highways. Some might wonder if Max Fuller has diesel fuel in his blood. His father sold used cars in the 1950s and ended up trading two Volkswagen Beetles for a tractor and trailer. He couldn't sell them, so he decided to put them to work. Just as the federal government was crisscrossing the country with an interstate highway system. When uh, I was going to school, I was actually working, working full time for my dad. So I was working full time, taking a full class load too. And I actually started, started pressure washing trucks, working in the shop, changing brake linings, changing tires, changing oil, and, and really gave me a good respect for uh, how people have to work at this industry. I probably, I'm one of the few people that's learned this industry from the very bottom all the way up. I've done just about every job in my industry that you can do other than drive a truck. Fuller took that experience and in 1986 he co-founded U.S. Express. Since that time, U.S. Express Enterprises has become one of the largest privately owned truckload carriers with affiliates that cover all of North America. U.S. Express has become an award-winning industry leader in technology and innovation, distinguishing it from its competition. Fuller led his company to become early adopters of such industry revolutionizing technologies as in-truck satellite communications, auto shift transmissions, and right side blind spot cameras. This commitment to innovation helped U.S. Express become the fastest truckload carrier to reach $1 billion in annual revenue. In fact, the company implemented new technologies an average of three to five years ahead of its competition. By the time the competition caught up, U.S. Express had already developed new products to ensure its position as industry leader. Fuller's spirit of innovation led him to enter into a research partnership with the UTC Sim Center, National Center for Computational Engineering. Using computer simulations, Sim Center researchers were able to model and develop prototypes to reduce wind resistance and increase fuel efficiency of the trucking fleet by 9%, saving more than 63 million gallons of fuel in its first year of implementation. We've been able to take aerodynamics on a tractor trailer and be able to increase our fuel economy by as much as 12 percent by applying some of the technology that the Sim Center came up with. If you look at uh, the skirts on a lot of the trucks running up and down the highway, the Sim Center was one of the early leaders in that type of technology. But we actually at US Express took and, and built a trailer with that design took it out and actually replicated almost with, within one half of one percent of what the Sim Center we would, uh, what we would get in fuel economy. So we started releasing that information out to different manufacturers and as we started buying products we said we want this on our equipment. So manufacturers kind of jumped on board real fast and now you see a lot of the tractor trailers going down the highway with these skirts that's under the belly of the trailer. That makes a big difference. With the Sim Center's technology, U.S. Express earned the EPA's Smart Way Environmental Excellence Award. The company continues to look for steps towards sustainability, but Fuller recognizes that technology and innovation are only as good as the people who employ them. My dad taught me years ago that, you know, if, if you treat people right, and you got to be honest, you know, both, both ways, good and bad, but if you treat people right, they'll treat you right. Now, with almost 11,000 employees, including 9,000 drivers who transport loads from coast to coast and Canada to Mexico, U.S. Express is well established as a truckload industry leader and national economic powerhouse. Fuller credits his UTC business education with helping him navigate the trucking industry highway, and he is positioning U.S. Express to be king of the road for years to come. One of the things I'm trying to do today is take a lot of people in that, that 20 and 30 year old bracket, teach them how to be the best in their industry that they can be. And as a result, U.S. Express will continue to thrive even when I'm not here. These are just a few examples of how UTC graduates are driving economic development in our region. UTC students are exploring the problems that are facing cities around the world and applying their knowledge to solutions through partnerships in Chattanooga. 
And when they graduate, UTC alumni are generating ideas, launching enterprises, changing lives, creating jobs, and making a difference in their communities. At the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, when we say we shall achieve, we have the proof. Our students achieve, our faculty achieve, our graduates achieve, and because of that, the communities that we touch also achieve.